There is a principle called Wu Wei. And this means Wu means non or not, no, negation. Wei has a combination of meanings. It can mean action, making, but the best translation I have found for it is forcing. And so Wu Wei is the principle of not forcing in anything that you do. Now we know when we watch any performance of an artist, be it a dancer or a, an actor or a musician, we know immediately when the performance is forced. And we say it doesn't ring true, it's too artificial, it doesn't seem to be natural. Many people who study the Taoist doctrines think that Wu Wei means do nothing in the sense of laissez-faire, be lazy, always be passive. It doesn't mean that. There is a time for action. When you study judo, you use muscle only at the right moment. When your opponent is hopelessly overextended and off balance, and you add a little muscle to it and you throw him across the room. But only then. You never use muscle at the wrong moment. For as Shakespeare knew perfectly well, there is a tide in the affairs of men which taken at its flood leads on to fortune. And so Wu Wei is based on knowledge of the tide. The drift of things. Get with it. Wu Wei is the art of sailing rather than the art of rowing. So, if you say now, one of the most famous sayings of Lao, in the Lao Tzu book is superior virtue has no intention to be virtuous and thus is virtue. Inferior virtue cannot let go of virtuosity and thus is not virtue. So one could also say the real Wu Wei is not intentionally Wu Wei and so is Wu Wei. But inferior Wu Wei so tries to be Wu Wei that it isn't. In other words, this is saying Wu Wei is not a matter of cultivated passivity or even of cultivated spontaneity because there are people who think that they are released, that they have realized that they are the Tao, as all of us in fact are, or that you are, to put it into Vedanta terms, every one of us is the Brahman, the eternal self of the universe, beyond all description or classification or thought. And say, okay, baby, I'm that. Now I'm going to have a ball. <laughs> well, what kind of a ball do they have? Well, what they do is they look up the rules on which society runs and do the opposite. Well, that's still running by the rules of society. I mean, it's the mirror image in reverse. That's not spontaneity. You have to be able to realize that you don't know what you really want to do until you are very quiet. And it tells you. So, to quote Jesus, unless you become again as a child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And if you read the Bible, incidentally, which is a very dangerous book, as I'm going to be demonstrating in Playboy this December. Uh, <laughs> But understand heaven in a very literal sense, space. See, we are in heaven now. 
because the earth is a spaceship and heaven is space. What is called in Chinese gung, Japanese gu, the void. That's what is important. That we, most of us don't know this. Even Shakespeare has one of his characters saying, oh, that this all too solid flesh would melt. But do you know you're much more space than you are anything else? If the ponderable, I won't say matter, the ponderable whatever in your bodies were condensed and all put together, it would be smaller than the point of a pin. And anyway, somebody once said, even a bishop is 80% water. <laughs> We are airy nothings. So space is somehow very, very fundamental. We go into this in further way. But you understand that heaven and all those references in those nursery rhymes that we learned as children, which were the hymns about heaven. Or as we're talking about thrones and crowns and harps and streets of glass. Crystals. Transparencies. Space. It comes down to space always. Space, which nobody can define, nobody can imagine, appears to be nothing, is the foundation of the universe. But you have to become again as a child to see that. Now, you know, go back to your childhood. What were the fascinating things? What's out there? What's beyond the stars? How long does it go on? And Mama said, it goes on always and always and always. The child wonders. He's excited that this is something that never ends. Then the child asks about time. How long ago is long ago? Well, the Bible says that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Well, what did God do before he did that? Well, as one person said, he sat up thinking punishments in hell for people who ask silly questions. <laughs> but still, that is only a joke. And the, 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 the child thinks of God, going back and back and back forever, but never beginning. So in the same way you think about death, go to sleep and never wake up, never. Whew. Why it would be as if you never had existed, not only you, but everything else. Which is of course the way things were before you were born. <laughs> you just turn it back. <laughs> you know, about how, how about waking up after having never gone to sleep? That's quite a thought. There's something fishy about it all. Ichthys, Jesus Christos, Theo, Yosso, here, the fish. So we get a funny feeling when we think those questions really through. Very funny feeling. And children, you see, love to get into that funny feeling. Children do all kinds of weird things. They like to spin around as fast as possible. So they watch the suddenly the whole the ground goes tilting. They do this thing with their eyes. And they go. And they make faces and test out their bodies in all sorts of funny ways. Because they know from the beginning that the world is weird. A strange thing. Because everybody knows 
what it's all about, only they won't admit it. Being brought up is being taught not to admit it. But you know very well what's going on. But in order to find out once more as an adult, you have to be coming in as a child. So what does that involve? It means, ladies and gentlemen, would you please check your ideas and opinions at the door? First of all, all your philosophical and religious views, all your logic, because I say check it at the door advisedly because you can pick it up again when you go out if you feel unsafe without it. I'm not trying to argue you out of your opinions and views. I'm merely suggesting that for the sake of an experiment, you temporarily suspend them. And view what is as if you didn't even know how to talk. Red is not red, blue is not blue. Hard is not hard, soft is not soft. Male is not male, female is not female. There is just this jazz. It will not be possible to compel yourselves into this way of looking at things because what Buddhists call habit energy is going on, 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 on. And as I talk to you, you will find yourselves thinking in a compulsive and habitual way. This is red, this is green, this is something, this is nothing, this is solid, this is space. All right, but treat those thoughts that are going on in your head in exactly the same way as if they were... See? That's all they are. Like shapes in the spray as the sea breaks on the rocks. Now, please don't get agitated that this is an anti-intellectual point of view, that this is undermining the value of logic and reason and so on. Just that We'll bring all that back later when we need it. But just for the time being, let's simplify. Close your eyes. Listen. What is? What do you really and truly, honestly, hear? 